Hello family, we thank the Lord for another day, the day he's made for us to be glad and rejoice in. And today is actually a special day. And the reason why it's a special day is because it marks day 100 since I started looking at different topic or subjects, areas that the Lord had laid on my heart to share with you and um, therefore it marks day 100 since we've been speaking confessions over ourselves based on the word of God for 100 days. If you've been consistently following this podcast, you have reason to be joyful and thankful that the Lord by his grace has helped us to consistently speak different words of confessions over ourselves in hundred days that we may never have done had it not been that the Lord led us in that direction. Just to recap, the subjects areas we've looked at in the hundred days have been based on fruitfulness, prosperity, health, protection, work. We've looked at children, we've looked at peace, divine favour, We looked at progress, advancement in our spiritual walk. And in the last nine days, we've looked at wisdom. And today is going to be day 10 of us hearing what God has to say to us concerning wisdom. And um, will therefore also be the last day that I will be encouraging us to speak words of confessions over ourselves. But we've done great and together I rejoice with you for what the Lord has done in our lives in the past hundred days. The fruits of our consistency, I'm sure, will continue to manifest in our lives, even in our future. Because we know that no prayer, no confessions or that we speak over ourselves goes unnoticed. It is working. God is working behind the scenes if it's not already evident in your life. And in due season, it will continue to bear fruit. For God watches over his word in our lives to um, to confirm it or to do it. So today, I just want to conclude what we've been or the Lord has been wanting to share with us concerning wisdom. The first scripture I want to look at is James chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 7. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Today, the Lord wants me to share with you that you are to ask for wisdom. And as James has said it beautifully, we are to ask in faith. Before James actually went on to give this or make the statements that if anyone lacks wisdom, they are to ask of God. He had been speaking to the people about how they would fall into various trials and how they were to be assured that those trials were the test would be the testing of their faith. And that testing of their faith would produce endurance and it would also develop their faith and that as their faith developed they would lack nothing but then after he says that then he says to them they are to ask for wisdom which I believe suggests that while he was saying to them that look you will fall into various trials your faith will be tested in order for your faith to be developed you need wisdom I believe he was saying to them that they needed wisdom in order for them to be able to persevere, to have endurance and to be able to ensure that when their faith was tested, that they will not lack, that they will actually see their faith developed. And so again today, just to really reiterate what I've been saying um, over the last few days, 
that wisdom is so important. And we see from the scripture in James that even if we want our faith to develop, we need the wisdom of God. So I think about this pandemic and all that is going on. We know that the world, every country, world leaders are doing the best that they can. But we as Christians also know that it will take the mercy of God, the divine intervention of God, for even the things that they've put in place that they think will work to work. People are doing what they know to do. Some are adhering to all the guidelines, the protocols in terms of hygiene, washing their hands, wearing PPs and so on. Yet we're seeing this, um, the increase of, of people that are contracting this disease daily. But we as people of God know that with God, nothing is impossible. Everybody's testing of their faith is happening as far as we Christians are concerned. Because this is the time where we who say we believe in God have to be able to demonstrate our faith. And our faith is what will bring us on our knees for us to pray, not just for our own selves and our families, but to pray for the countries that we live in, to pray that the Lord God will intervene in this world globally so that this evil plague will pass over. But you know what? We need wisdom. We even need wisdom to know what we are to pray for. We need wisdom to know what we are to do individually because globally we've been told wear PPs and so on. But the truth of the matter is, for example, if you work in the healthcare sector and you're, com- you're encountering people who have contracted the disease on a daily basis, you would need a certain level of protection. You would need to do over and above what everybody, the masses are doing. But that would depend on the wisdom that God gives you. And so when James was saying to the people that they are to ask for wisdom if they lack it, he was basically saying that there will come times when there are certain challenges, certain situations that would require you to make certain decisions. But when you do not know which way to go, ask God to give you wisdom. Because in him giving you wisdom, you will be able to persevere. You'll be able to keep your eyes fixed on God. You will not waver in your faith. And in the end, your faith will be developed But even then, he says something also profound, that when you ask of God, you are to ask in faith. And I shared a few days ago in the podcast that I'd done where we identified what faith is, that faith is the assurance of having something that you've asked for. You cannot feel it with your senses, all your five senses. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. You cannot smell it. But you have confident assurance that you have what you have asked for. So James is saying that when you and I pray for wisdom from God, we are to have the assurance that God who gives liberally has given us the wisdom that we need. Yesterday, we also identified wisdom telling us, describing itself, wisdom telling us his genesis, wisdom telling us that he has an identity. He was with God from the beginning. And we identified that the Bible refers to um, a scripture where we identify that it says the spirit of wisdom and we understood that to be the spirit of God. I just want to read quickly First Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 20 to verse 25. It says this, where is the wise man philosopher? Where is the scribe scholar? Where is the debater, logician, orator of this age? Has God not exposed the foolishness of this world's wisdom? For since the world through all its earthly wisdom failed to recognize God, God in his wisdom was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached regarding salvation to save those who believe in Christ and welcome him as saviour. For Jews demand signs, attesting miracles, and Greeks pursue worldly wisdom and philosophy. But we preach Christ crucified, a message which is to Jews a stumbling block that provokes the opposition, and to Gentiles foolishness just utter nonsense. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is because the foolishness of God is not foolishness at all and is wiser than men, far beyond human comprehension. And the weakness of God is stronger than men, far beyond the limits of human effort. So we see in James, um, 1 Corinthians one twenty five. not sorry, not 25, but in, in the passage that I've read, where it's telling us that Christ Jesus 
is has become to us who have believed the wisdom of God. And so I want to even encourage you that when God is saying to you and I, therefore, that we are to ask of wisdom, if we lack it, one of the things we need to do is to ask ourselves if Christ Jesus, who is the wisdom of God, is living inside of us. And if you've never accepted the Lord as Savior, I would encourage you to do so. And all you need to do is to acknowledge that he is the Son of God, that he came to die on the cross, pay the penalty for your sin, and that through that penalty you've received the free gift of salvation is made available, but you just need to ask him to come into your heart, to ask him to forgive you your sins, and Jesus would come in. And it is the same reason why for those of us who have believed on Christ, he told us that when we have accepted him as Lord and Savior, he will give us his Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom will come and indwell in us. And as the spirit of God indwells in us, the wisdom that God is asking of us to demonstrate will become evident in our lives. But I also did mention a few days ago that wisdom is not something that happens instantaneously. It's a walk. Over time, we grow and increase in wisdom. So just to remind you of what the Lord has shared with us over the last um, nine days, he told us we are to esteem and seek wisdom, that he is the one who gives wisdom, that when we walk in reverential fear of him, we will have wisdom. When we walk in humility, we will be demonstrating wisdom. When we adhere to his statutes and we surround ourselves with the wise, our wisdom will increase. And he gave us some of the benefits of wisdom, which is that wisdom that he gives us will give us strength. It will give us protection. And we're to also remember the daily wisdom calls out, but it takes the discerning them that are living by the spirit of God to be able to hear to the call or to heed to the call of wisdom. So today, let us remember God is saying to us, that of all the things he's told us, we are also to know that he's given us an open invitation that whenever we lack wisdom, we are to ask of him. But if Christ is already in us and the spirit of God is already in us, then we'll be able to do what James said, that when we ask of God for wisdom, we can have confident assurance that we receive it because already Christ, who is our wisdom, lives in us. The spirit of wisdom is already inside of us. And so there's no reason why we should doubt that God will give us wisdom when we ask of it. So today we're speaking our confession in faith over ourselves. And our confession today is, I seek wisdom and the Lord grants it to me. His wisdom, which is incomparable to the wisdom of this world. I have reverential fear of God and I am humble in heart. I adhere to the statutes of God and he makes me wise. I surround myself with the wise and I gain strength from the wisdom of God and protection. I heed to the call of wisdom, and I ask God for wisdom in faith. The Lord bless you. And just to reiterate or to share with you that some of you have reached out to me and have asked me to send you um the the confessions we've been speaking over ourselves just so that you can have access to them and to speak it over yourselves in your own spare time just to let you know that if you get the podcasts from me through whatsapp and you want me to send you the the list of confessions we've done over the last hundred days um, please feel free send me a message and I will let you receive it if you do not have access to me via whatsapp and you're accessing this podcast on Spreaker I would encourage you again, if you go into the profile area of Eyes on God on Spreaker, you will see an email that you can use to reach out to me to make your request. And as soon as I get your request, I would ensure that I send you um, the confessions that we've spoken over ourselves in the last hundred days so that you have access to them and you can carry on speaking them over yourselves in the foreseeable future. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you tomorrow something new and exciting that I'm going to be doing um, of, as the Lord has laid on my heart. So looking forward to sharing with you tomorrow. Remain blessed, remain steadfast in your walk with the Lord, and let us remember that a spirit of wisdom is in us if we have already accepted Christ, and we can tap into it. All we need to do is to ask of God to give us wisdom. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.